Welcome back to my channel. I appreciate you guys joining. In today's video, we're gonna tackle a topic that has been on the minds of many millennials, and that is the topic of home ownership. A recent study showed that 25% of millennials have given up on the dream of buying a home, and I honestly, I totally understand why. It's expensive. Buying a house isn't easy, and it's more expensive now than it's ever been. So how can you win in this market? So in this video, I'm gonna give you my top strategies to help you get the home that you want with the down payment that you want and the monthly payment that you want. So let's jump in. So a lot of young people today think it's too risky to buy a home today market but here's what you need to know the bank actually takes most of the risk so when you're buying your first home you only have to put down a very small down payment of the price like three to five percent of the purchase price of the house so the bank is going to lend you though 95 to 97 percent of the funds needed to purchase the property so the real risk is really on the lender who is putting up all this money you need to know that the reason why they do this is because they know that real estate is a safe asset to invest in for the long term before you jump into home ownership i think you need to know that not everyone should buy a home. There are many great things about buying a home, but you have to be prepared. So here's a simple checklist that I want you to use. Number one, how long do you plan to stay in the area? You should plan to buy in an area that you will plan to be in for the next several years. Your first home doesn't have to be your forever home, but if you plan to move from the area soon, you may be better off renting. Number two, do you have stable monthly income? Now, obviously this is important because it's used to calculate how much of a home that you can actually afford. Number three is, do you have savings? And you should have some funds set aside for a small down payment cost. Family can help you with this if needed. Now, if you can successfully get past these three questions, you should probably meet with an expert to find out how much you qualify for and get information on home prices in your specific market. So who is an expert? Well, an expert is an experienced mortgage professional who specializes in first-time buyers. Now, this is an area in which my team and I can assist you. So if you'd like to skip ahead and learn more, you can book a free consult call or free Zoom with us by just using the link below. Now, remember, we only set aside a certain amount of time each week to do these calls and and the time slots are always limited. So just use the link, which will take you to our schedule to book your free discovery call. Okay, so let's talk about what currently seems the biggest impediment right now, the biggest staller, what's holding everybody back, and that's interest rates. And here's the thing, higher rates can actually benefit buyers in this market, and I'm gonna explain why and how this works. Now, mortgage rates are the primary driver of the US housing market. And what has happened over the last few years is something like we've never seen, and we will likely never see again, and that was seeing mortgage rates in the three and sometimes in the twos. Now, if you listen to any economist or market analyst, they will tell you that mortgage rates at this level and this low are likely to never return. It was an anomaly that was caused indirectly by poor decision-making by the Federal Reserve who lowered the short-term rates for short-term loans like cars, credit cards, home equity lines of credit, things like that, to a level so low that it caused higher prices, which was inflation. And the inflation is run up too high and too quickly. So what is normal for interest rates? Forget about all the double-digit rate talk you hear about about when older folks say, back in my day, our first home was bought with a 12% interest rate. The reality is who cares? This is not helpful, nor is it even encouraging to those of you who are trying to enter the market right now. The fact is, here's where average mortgage rates have been year over year since the year 2000. As you can see rates have actually drifted into the sevens, earlier on, sixes, fives, that sort of thing. What history has told those of us in the mortgage market is that behaviorally speaking, American home buyers tend to enter the market in droves when mortgage rates dip into the mid fives. Meaning for whatever reason, it's rates that are in the fives that make people change their behavior from sitting on the sidelines to seriously house hunting. So a lot of people right now are on the sidelines, literally just hibernating, just waiting to come out. Almost like a bear, he, come, he goes and hibernates for the winter and they come out, you know they're gonna come out. Well, that's what we know. We know that there are millions of millennials who are waiting on the sidelines to buy a home. And some of these folks are waiting for interest rates to come down. But this will most likely end up costing you more in the long run. And here's why. Home prices move based on supply and demand. Now, in many markets, supply is tight, meaning that there's not a lot of properties to look at. So it's buyer's demand that's actually moving the prices up or down. When rates are a bit higher, demand is lower because some buyers are pushed out of the market. And it's just not as popular to buy real estate when money is more expensive. When rates are lower, demand goes up. You have to compete with more buyers, which causes you to have to pay more for the same property. What you want to be able to do is negotiate the best deal when there is lower demand. And remember, every
every mortgage rate analyst out there is predicting lower mortgage rates over the next 12 to 18 months. And when these rates come down, you have the opportunity to then refinance to a lower interest rate with a lower payment. But here's what you need to know about the state of interest rate right now and how you can still win. A major portion of buyers in this current market are not taking the standard base 30 year fixed rates. Instead, we as lenders are getting creative and utilizing tools that have been around for years, but we just weren't using them that much because rates were abnormally low for several years. These tools and strategies include things like the use of interest rate buy downs, both temporary interest rate buy downs and permanent rate buy downs. Now I want to talk about both. First, a temporary buy down. The most common temporary buy down is what's called a two one arm. The way the two one buy down works is like this. Let's say your scenario is a $400,000 home and you're putting 3% down on a conventional loan. And let's say the current market rate is 6.75% as an example for a 30 year fixed with your scenario. Now at that rate, a base payment would equate to about $2,514 per month. Now this is the base payment does not include tax insurance. I'm just trying to show you the difference between base payments as everybody's taxes insurance is going to be different depending on where you live. Now with a two one buy down, the first year start rate would be 4.75, which is 2% lower than the actual rate of the 6.75. And it would have a payment about $500 less per month, which is about $6,000 per year in savings in year one. In year two, the rate would go up to 5.75%, which is 1% lower than the actual rate of 6.75%. And the savings would be about $255 per month in year two. After year two, the payment would be based on the actual rate of 6.75% and would go to $2,500. $16 and stay there for the duration of the loan. Now the cost of the 2-1 buy down is usually around 2 to 2.25% of the loan amount, which in this case would be approximately $8,900. So who pays this? Well, you could pay it either up front in your closing costs, or you could try to negotiate to have the seller pay it. Now, if you ask the seller to pay it, they give you a credit at closing for the cost of the buy down, which means that the $8,900 would be deducted from their side of the settlement statement. Now it's important for you as a buyer to understand that a concession like this to the seller is the same thing as taking $8,900 less for their home. Which brings up the question, why not just ask the seller for the $8,900 price reduction? Would that be better for you? Well, let's take a look at that. So dropping the price from $400,000 down to $390,000 would lower your payment by approximately only $60 per month because your loan amount is going to go down about $10,000. But if you leave the price at $400,000 and take the same $10,000 and use it as a seller credit to do a 2-1 buy down, this is a huge difference because through the first couple of years with a lower payment, you end up saving much more money. The seller, on the other hand, ends up with the same amount of proceeds either way, so it's the same to them. You just need to learn to negotiate. Now, let's take a look at the permanent rate buy down. Now, a permanent rate buy down means that, again, some upfront costs are paid by you or the seller in exchange for a lower rate. In this case, a rate that is permanently lower. Now, these rates and prices to buy down the rates will fluctuate on a day-to-day basis with the market, but I've seen borrowers get a rate of 1% lower for a cost of maybe roughly 2% of the loan amount. So perhaps instead of a 6.75% rate in our example, you might get a rate closer to 5.75, but it remains there. It does not ever adjust upward. Now this would mean that your payment would be approximately $252 less per month, which is about $3,000 less per year than if you took the actual market rate. Now why is this important? Well, we know that millennials make up about 80 million people in our population and there are more millennials turning the age of their prime home buying years than ever before in the history of the world. This means that these millennials are likely to keep driving up home prices because of the lack of inventory. Now, what is inventory? That inventory just means the amount of homes that are available to buy. The problem is there were far too few many homes built over the last 10 years and it has caused a housing shortage. Now, what happened was in 2008, the builders got burned and spooked because of a massive fallout with the subprime market. That market's completely gone, but we saw this massive dip in home builds. So the new home builds were just really, really way down over the course of that 10 year period after 2008. And now we're really seeing fallout of that. We are millions of homes short from where we need to be to support the kind of demand that we have. For example, currently there are about 980,000 homes on the market. Now this is slim pickings for a country with 330 million people and 130 million households. Now compare this with 2012 or even 2008, and we're about 25% of the inventory. We need to have a healthy market that's more more balanced for buyers and sellers. And let's even take a closer look at the 980,000 homes. Homes included in this number also include homes already under contract, which are about 400,000 homes right now. 
Now you can't really buy these homes. Somebody's already under contract to buy these other 400,000 homes. So when you take out those 400,000, we're left with only about 578,000 homes right now. As you can see, that is an extremely low amount of homes for the size of the country we have and for the amount of people that we have wanting to buy homes. So this means that home prices are likely to continue to rise after this dip caused by higher rates. This is what history shows us. See, most people try to time the bottom of the market, end up missing the bottom, and wait until prices start to go back up. The trick is to see the future before it becomes obvious. Right now, you can actually take advantage of a little bit of fear, a little bit of weakness in sellers, and enter the market before the bottom. So how can you take advantage? Let's do some math. So mortgage rates are expected to decrease by about 1%, at least within the next 18 months. Currently, mortgage rates are 1% to 2% higher than they have been in the past year. A 2% difference in rate we've already seen can equate to almost a $6,000 difference in cost over the course of a year based on a $400,000 purchase price. But even with just a 3% appreciation rate to the home, that would mean a $12,000 gain in appreciation. So if rates come down in a year, and let's say you have to pay $5,000 to get a lower rate, you're still on top because of the difference. If you take the $5,000 that it costs you to refinance, plus the $1,500 in extra cost, you're still below the $12,000 with a very modest appreciation. So you can see when you look at the big picture and what's likely to happen, there are ways to actually use the current higher rate environment to your advantage to gain a better deal for the long run. You can literally look at when rates tick up on a month or even weekly basis throughout the marketplace that pricing will come down. What happens is rates go up, everyone gets the news, and then that week you'll literally see less traffic at open houses, you'll see less traffic of people making contracts, you'll see less traffic of people buying the homes. It just goes on on an ebb and flow, and so what you wanna do is be cognizant of these facts so that you can use them to your advantage. If you're in the market to buy a home, you maybe wait, as strange as it sounds, if rates tick up just a tiny bit, you're gonna see that you're gonna be able to get possibly a little bit lower price for that home. Now, remember, I wanna take this opportunity to say, look, if you're in a market that's on fire right now, if you're on the West Coast, if you're in Denver, if you're in places where on the East Coast or in Miami, where home prices are still multiple offers and uh, not a lot of concessions, this is not gonna work in those markets. But what you need to know is that the places where most people are moving, which is the the southeast we are seeing a lot of prices come down a little bit but we're also seeing concessions made for buyers meaning the seller is giving the buyers concessions which the buyers are then using to get an interest rate reduction on a buy down to get their payment lower and save thousands of dollars in the first couple of years and even permanently on their home with the understanding that all the data shows that mortgage rates are gonna come down and that you have the opportunity to refinance. I've been doing this for 26 years and I can tell you that rates ebb and flow and there are gonna be times where people are gonna buy and those same people will wanna come back later in a couple of years and they'll refinance to a much lower rate and that's just how it's worked for the last 25 years that I've been doing this. But what if you just can't find the home that you want? Maybe like a lot of others, you still think it's way too difficult and I totally get that. What I want to share with you is there are some creative ways that you can make it work. Now, first, you want to consider starting with a property that's not your dream home. I know this sounds like obvious, but I know a lot of successful homeowners who started small and worked their way up. They bought a property that needed a little bit of work and then they gradually improved it over time or they bought and or they bought something that was a little bit outside of town, maybe not exactly where they're renting because they realized if they tried to buy in the epicenter of where they're renting now, it's going to be too expensive and it's going to be too high of a mortgage payment. Whereas you move a little bit further out of town, more bang for your buck and you're able to get into more of a price point and more of a payment that you want. Now, another option is teaming up with an agent who specializes in finding off-market deals and motivated sellers. Now, these agents have the expertise to identify opportunities that may not be available through traditional channels. You can find some really great deals this way. Now, lastly, there are different financing options available, especially for first-time buyers that are out there to help you. Now, one option is an FHA loan. Everyone's heard of an FHA loan. It's a loan that offers three and a half percent down so it's a low down payment more flexible credit requirements so if you have a credit score in the low 600s or even high 500s you still are possibly able to get approved whereas conventional loans meaning Fannie Mae Freddie Mac those are those guys maybe you can't buy using conventional routes when your scores are lower it's just too difficult or it's too expensive FHA is much more forgiving when your scores are lower and they don't penalize you by jacking your rate up like conventional does when you have a say low 600 score now these FHA loans are insured 
insured by the Federal Housing Administration, which provides security for lenders, and some or all of the down payment can actually be a gift from a family member. So what if you still are having trouble because you just can't get a gift or you just don't have the down payment and you still want to get into the market? Here's another cool tip. A lot of 401k plans or retirement plans, if you have a 401k or a retirement plan, some of those plans will allow you to withdraw funds for the purchase of a home. What you need to do is just check with your plan administrator to find out. So there are options out there if you're willing to think outside the box. Another option for those of you who may not have the down payment is down payment assistance programs. What you want to do is do a Google search for your area, your city and state for down payment assistance programs available in your city. Now, for example, here in Tennessee, there's a Tennessee Housing Development Authority loan. It's a THDA loan, which is a grant program which provides funds for a down payment for qualified borrowers. Now, other states have similar programs like California recently rolled out one called the Cal HFA and funds were gobbled up almost immediately by hungry buyers. Florida has one called Florida Assist. Now, another great option is the USDA. Now, USDA stands for United States Department of Agriculture, also known as a rural development loan. So rural meaning it's a little bit outside the city limits, but there are still entire neighborhoods that are designated eligible for USDA. Now, these loans provide zero down, 100% financing for qualified buyers purchasing a home in a zone deemed eligible by USDA. You can look at properties in your area to see if they're eligible by going to this site. Now, keep in mind with USDA and some of these down payment assistance programs, they will have income restrictions. FHA, no income restriction. So that's important to keep in mind. Income restriction meaning that there's a chart they're going to have that's going to apply to every single buyer out there depending on the size of your household and there's limitations. So you just have to scrub that against the city where you're at. So you just want to make sure that you're under the income limit for your area. Now let's also not forget that if you are a veteran of the military, you may be eligible for a VA loan, which is also a zero down loan. Or if you are a veteran and you'd like to know what your eligibility is, feel free to reach out to me and my team and we can assist. So guys, remember buying a home is a big decision and it's really important to consider your long-term goals, your financial situation and the current market conditions. But by being informed and strategic, you can make home ownership a reality for you as a millennial. And with the right planning and strategy and utilizing available resources, you can become a homeowner and start to build long-term wealth. Now, it may not be easy, but it's definitely possible. And I'm telling you guys, it wasn't easy when I bought a home and it's even harder now. And I get it. I totally empathize with you. But anything worth having is going to be difficult. So here's the thing. If you'd like some help to know where you currently stand or some help with determining the most efficient and wise way to purchase a home and the price point that you want, my team and I do set aside some blocks of time each day to work with folks one-on-one -on -one, over the phone or over a Zoom call. Now, these are free calls. There's no cost for these calls, but these appointment slots are first come, first serve, and they do fill up quickly each week. So if it is something you feel like would help you, just use the calendar link below to book a time and this time slot that's good for you. So good luck on your journey. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more helpful tips. Until next time, I'll see you.